welcome to Martell's Movie Madness. It's your host, as always, Ryan Martell here. Um, I apologize for the background noise. I'm having to wash uh, my laundry, and I live in a trailer, so uh, all the sound in this place carries no matter how far away you are. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's what you're hearing in the background, if you can hear it. Uh, I'm picking it up a little bit on my headphones, but it may not be that bad. Uh, once I get everything mixed out. Um, but yeah, I hope y'all had a great holiday or great holidays. It's been, uh, at the time of recording, it's still Hanukkah and it's prior to New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. But by the time a lot of y'all hear this, it'll be after all that. So I hope everybody had a great holiday. Uh, no matter what you celebrate, if you celebrated Christmas, I hope it was a merry one. Hanukkah, I hope it was joyous. Kwanzaa, I hope it was uh, festive. I think that's what they say. Have a festive Han- uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, happy ha- happy Kwanzaa, whatever. Uh, I'm not very sure. Um, happy New Year to everyone. Uh, that's something that if we live in, at least if we live in America, that we all have in common. That the New Year will be, st- well, actually around the world, the New Year will actually be starting. Um, <clears throat> so to be 2020, by the time you hear this, a lot of you, uh, unless you're listening on Patreon, you get that a couple days early, so it'll still be 2019. Um, and on this episode today, I'm going to be doing my top 10 movies of 2019. Um, there's a couple that are going to be missing just because I didn't get to watch them. Uh, I tried to squeeze in as many as I could. That's the reason why it's the first episode of January and not part of the Christmas special. Um, So, yeah. And, I mean, even the ones that I squeezed in I thought would affect my top ten. They didn't. I didn't change my top ten after watching a couple of uh, ones that I had missed earlier on when they came out. Um, But, yeah, there's still a few that I didn't get to watch that I'll talk about whenever I get to that part. Uh, of course, first I've got the dates to plug. I got a couple dates to plug, and I've got my what you watching segment. Uh, I do not have the dates for the VHS potluck or the uh, cult movies in a cave for January yet. Hopefully, I get them before the event so that I can plug them at least once on the podcast. Um, of course, those are both at Vizart Video, so uh, go follow them on social media. It's it's um. At Vizart Video on Instagram. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual direct link is on Facebook, but it's just Vizart Video. Uh, you just type it in, it'll come right up. Um, and I think it is Vizart Charlotte or Vizart CLT on uh, Twitter. So go follow them on all those different social media platforms, and we will. Uh, get those dates out to you as soon as possible they'll be posting about them i'll be posting about them i'll be talking about them on the show so um yeah now as for the actual dates that i do have uh january 3rd through the 9th uh scream queen my nightmare on elm street is going to be screening at vizart video uh that is a documentary about uh mark Patton, the star of freddy uh nightmare on elm street part two freddy's revenge return freddy's revenge it's freddy's revenge i'm only like the biggest nightmare on elm street fan of all time but uh that's neither here nor there uh but it's about him and his journey to uh i guess self-discovery through his time on the film uh i guess i don't really exactly know but it is definitely dealing with his sexuality and how the movie um, had the gay subplot and he was closeted at the time, I believe. <clears throat> Something that I've been waiting for a long time to see. It's been doing the festival and uh, uh, just different theater circuit for a long time and now it's finally coming to Charlotte. I finally get the chance to see it on uh, Friday, hopefully. And it's $4 for Film Society, Charlotte Film Society members, $7 for non-members. Again, that's at Vizart Video. Uh, the screenings start at 7.30. Um, come on out. 
join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, January 18th, this is the big important one for me. Uh, it's our first Martell's Movie Madness show at VizArt Video. Uh, we're screening a film by a Charleston independent filmmaker, John Johnson. Uh, it was written by him and his brother, and he directed it. It's the first time directorial debut. Um, I'm trying to get that, keep that bubbling sound from coming up on the background. But uh, this is going to be January 18th at VizArt Video, uh, completely free. We're showing a movie called Flesher. Uh, it's a movie that was made in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, like I said, it's incredible. Um, you can tell that it was made with passion, and it was also made by people who had an understanding of what they wanted to show and what they wanted to tell. Um, I feel like it is a unique twist on a genre that is like very um copy and paste sometimes um of course there's nothing really new under the sun of course but like um i, for, I think that flesher takes a fresh approach to something that we've all seen a couple times before it's definitely different and it has great special effects for as low budget as it is and if you want to learn hear more about flesher you can on uh, patreon.com slash Martell's Movie Madness. I do a kind of in-depth uh, review, spoiler-free review, of course, like I do all my reviews on the Days of the Dead post-show episode. So go on on there and join. Uh, I think it's in the $10 tier. Uh, might be, I think, I, I might have changed it and made it cheaper since then. But I don't know. It's it's in the second tier up. It's not the very first tier. That's the one with you, you just get the early access it tells you what everything is on there. Uh, but yeah, I'm showing Flesher at VizArt Video uh, January 18th. That's going to be the first Martell's Movie Madness event at VizArt. Hopefully we're going to be doing those every month. Uh, something different. We're, we're going to mix it up. Uh, it'll be local, regional, uh, obscure movies. Things that you might not know even existed or things that you know existed and just want to see with a bunch of people. Um, but yeah, that's going to be cool. That's going to be absolutely free. Of course, donations are, are, uh, very highly, uh, encouraged because we want to keep VizArt in business. We want to keep, um, events like this happening at VizArt. Uh, that's for all of their events. You want to make sure that even if it's a, even if it's an event with the film society where you have to pay, you should be donating more to VizArt. You should be making sure that you chip in a little bit. Uh, VizArt Video is a nonprofit organization, so every little bit of money that they make goes back into the store. <clears throat> um, so yeah, those are my dates. Um, January 18th for Flesher at VizArt. January 3rd through 9th, Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, no dates for the VHS potluck and no date for the uh, cult movies in a cave, but keep an eye out on VizArt's social media for both of those. Those are both free, and the Flesher are free. Uh, Scream Queen is $4 for Charlotte Film Society members and $7 for non-members. So come on out and join us at one of those events. I'm going to be at at least two of those because I'm definitely going to Scream Queen and I'm definitely going to be at Flesher because it's my event. Uh, the guys, the director, the writer, and the two stars, two of the stars of Flesher are going to be there. The two lead female characters are going to be there uh, answering some questions after the show, maybe. And they're going to have merchandise. They're going to be available for meet and greet, I guess, if you kind of want to do that kind of thing. Um... It's going to be a lot of fun, so everybody should come on out. I've got a short What You Watching this week. I didn't watch a lot of stuff for the first time. Uh, with the holidays going on, I was real busy, so, and I was re-watching a lot of stuff just because I was doing things also. Um, but the pick of the week this week is going to be American Made, starring Tom Cruise. It is based on the true story of uh, Barry Seal, a pilot who 
was basically like a triple agent. He was working for the CIA, the uh, the drug cartel uh, with Pablo Escobar and everything. And then he was also working for Noriega at a period of time. Uh, it's it's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, like I said, it's based on a true story, and a lot of the shit that happens in the movie really happened in real life. Um, I gave it a 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale. I don't know if I've talked about it on here before or not, because I think I might have watched it either last year before I had the podcast or this year before I had the podcast. Either way, I did watch it before I had the podcast, so I haven't, I don't think I've talked about it on here before. Uh, so yeah, 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale. Uh, I rewatched it on Christmas night, I think, actually, with my brother, and it's just a great movie. Um, but yeah, that's the pick of the week, so go ahead and go check that one out. Um, next up, <clears throat> uh, I watched Ready or Not. This is one that I rented from Vizart Video. Um, Ready or Not is like a... It, well, it's not like it. It is a it is a suspenseful horror movie. Um, basically, the gist is that it follows Samara Weaving's character, who is marrying into this gaming family. Like they they've got like a uh, a gaming dynasty, <clears throat> like board games and such, and the kind of initiation or. Uh, yeah, initiation would be the right word. Initiation ritual uh, for new people coming into the family is that they have to play a game. And the game is randomly selected by drawing a card. And she draws hide-and-seek, which is uh, the only game, I think, that they play where uh, you have to kill the person hiding. Uh, for the longest time, she goes without realizing that they're trying to kill her. She thinks it's just an innocent uh, game of hide and seek because nobody's smarting her up. And but she does learn very quickly that uh, oh wow, this is getting real. Um, <clears throat> it starts off. It's it's very funny. It's very suspenseful, and it's also very. Uh, it it has its moments of like a jump scare, and. <clears throat> I would definitely say that I enjoyed it about as much as I expected to. Uh, I had heard people were let down by it. Um, and then I'd heard a lot of people within the um, within the genre, people who are horror fans mostly, um, talking about how great it was. So I watched it myself. Made up my mind. I gave it a 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale. It's a damn good movie. Uh, everybody's Everybody in it's great. Uh, the story is, itself is great. The ending is great. It's fun. It's campy. It's also a little bit of suspenseful and dreadful. Um, definitely worth checking out. Um, it's out now on Blu-ray and DVD. You can rent it at Vizart Video. You can also, I'm, I'm assuming you can get it online anywhere that, you know, streams uh, video on demand. So, like, Amazon or whatever. Um, but, yeah. Next up is Miss 45, which is another uh, movie that I rented from Vizart Video. Uh, I rented it on VHS. Uh, that's the only copy they had. I think it was a VHS re-release, -re -re too, so... Uh, not even like one of the old, super old copies of it, but um, <clears throat> it's a real cool movie. It's a, uh, it's, I want to say, I, I would say it's, uh, well, shit. Um, I don't want to call it a rape revenge movie, even though that's kind of like how it starts. Uh, because she gets raped twice in the very beginning of the movie and, uh, she kills one of the guys. I don't know if she, I don't remember if she ever got to, I don't know if she ever found the other guy or maybe it was the same guy. And I was just like delirious when I watched it and thought it was two different guys. Um, but either way she gets her revenge on that guy and then basically just goes around killing creeps the rest of the movie 
<clears throat> very fun. Uh, very exploitation. It's, it's it definitely is an exploitation movie. Uh, it's one of Abel Ferrara's early movies. Uh, I'm getting into an Abel Ferrara uh, rabbit hole. I'm gonna try to start. I'm gonna start trying to watch all of his movies, or as many as I can get my hands on. Um, so yeah, next up is gonna be. Uh, God, there was one that he's really famous for, but I, I kid slips my brain now. Um, but I recently watched King of New York, like I've talked about on the podcast, and now I've watched Miss Forty Five. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of Abel Ferrara's work. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying his directorial pursuits so far. <clears throat> uh, last one that I have for the What You Watching This Week, uh, sorry, is actually a movie that I own. Uh, it was a Christmas present from my brother, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I missed it when it was in theaters. I hated that I had to miss it, but it just wasn't in the cards for me to go see a movie in the theaters at that time. Uh, it didn't play long, uh, but it it really was a great movie. Uh, I heard a lot of people shitting on it. Uh, some people say it was a great movie up until the very end, and I'm like, now, uh, now that I've seen it, uh, I'm like, what were you expecting the end to be? Because I'm pretty sure that that's what he said was going to be happening in this movie. That's what everybody said was happening in this movie since the very beginning. Um, but yeah, in case you haven't heard anything about that, I won't spoil it. I will say that it is a... Uh, it is what I would consider, what I think is a like a love note to that old uh, Hollywood exploitation, the California exploitation movies. Um, definitely reeks of old Hollywood. Uh, I think it's a very fun and entertaining flick. Uh, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are great. They're fucking perfect in this movie. Uh, yeah. And Tarantino just doing Tarantino, man. He does whatever the fuck he wants to, and, you know, you can either love it or hate it. He doesn't give a shit because he's making movies for him. He's entertaining himself at this point. And, you know, it doesn't even matter because it's still fucking good. Um, but, yeah, that's what I got for the What You Watching this week. Oh, I didn't give it a scale rating yet. Uh, I gave it a four out of five because I didn't think it was perfect. I wouldn't say it's not my favorite Tarantino movie, but it's definitely a good movie. A really good movie. <clears throat> Alright, so that's my What You Watching This Week. Um, I'm going to switch my notes over real quick. I'm not going to go... I'm not going to take a break because I'm crunching in for time here. Uh, I'm trying to get this... Uh, it's Sunday, like I said. Uh, I'm trying to get this recorded and uploaded before I have to go to work at 5 o'clock, and it is now 1.45, so I'm not going to cut here. I'm just going to go straight into the uh, main part of the podcast. Uh, this is the top 10 movies of 2019. Uh, so, of course, um, there are a few that I didn't get to see that I really wanted to see that might have made this list. Uh, it Chapter 2, I didn't get to see. Uh, a lot of people told me it wasn't as good as the first one, or it was a garbage movie, or whatever. I don't know. Um, but I did want to see it. I've I've got it. I just haven't been able to watch it yet. Uh, I rented it from VizArt this week. I'm, I'm going to watch it between now and Friday. Um, what else? Was, what else come out this year that I didn't get to see? The Lighthouse, I didn't get to see. Um... It seemed like a really fucking good movie. A lot of people, everybody that I know that saw it were very uh, impressed by it and gave me stellar reviews. Um, Parasite is another one that I wish I could have seen before I made this list. I heard a lot of good things about that as well. Uh, Greener Grass, uh, a lot of people were really speaking highly of Greener Grass. Um... What else? Um, Honey Boy got a lot of good reviews this year also from people that I know. I don't really 
listen to critics. Um, funny because I am kind of a critic, but like, I'm just a dude that loves movies. That's all it is. It's just like I'm just a dude telling you my opinion on the movie, like how much I liked it. It doesn't have anything to do with like you know nitpicky shit like all these other fucking critics do but all right now that we've gotten that out oh yeah the irishman i didn't watch the irishman yet um but it is definitely gonna get watched soon hopefully jesus christ is three and a half hours long um it's kind of it's really fucking hard for me to sit and watch a two hour movie let alone a three and a half hour long movie uh, not because I can't pay attention, I just don't have that much fucking time, half the time. Oh, so I'm going to start with my honorable mentions. These are movies that just basically barely missed the list. Movies that I, I really liked this year, but just I wouldn't consider top ten of the year. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, oh shit, fuck, hold on. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to cut, but I needed to cut. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, sorry for the abrupt end and cut back in here. Uh, I realized that I didn't have my notes all together, so I had to stop it and restart. Uh, so now, honorable mentions. Uh, I'm going to start with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, like I said, I thought it was a great movie. I don't know if I necessarily agreed that it was the greatest movie this year. Uh, I gave it a 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale, like I just said, on the What You Watch In. Uh, but it definitely makes my honorable mentions, and maybe, who knows, I might feel differently about it, you know, after it's sit for a while. But uh, it's been a couple days now, and I really think that it just, just barely misses the list. Uh, Ready or Not, also another honorable mention, like I said, 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale. If this was top 10 horror movies of 2019, it definitely would have made the list. Uh, it's just top 10 general movies though, so it, it's it just shy of it. Uh, same thing with the next one, Tigers Aren't Afraid. It definitely would have made top 10 horror movies of the year. Um, but just shy of top 10 general movies. Uh, 4 out of 5 on Martell scale as well for that one. Dolomite is my name. Um, <clears throat> 4 out of 5 on the Martell scale. Uh... Just another one that just barely missed the list. Of course, it's fantastic, though. Uh, these honorable mentions are movies that I definitely think you should all check out. Uh, they're just great, fun movies. Um, Happy Death Day to You. 3.5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. I think I've talked about most of these movies on the show before. Um, there's a few in the top 10 that I hadn't, so I had to rate like right then. Um, but there's also the, most of these movies already had ratings. Some of them I might've appended because, uh, just of how long it's since it's been and I've had time for it to sit and really stew on it and think about it. And I've watched a couple of them over again. Um, but yeah, my last honorable mention is book smart. Um, I gave it a four out of five on the Martell scale, fun coming of age. I mean, it's just, it's a great cute little movie um so yeah those are my honorable mentions like i said before i didn't watch the irishman it chapter two a lot of movies didn't get watched this year uh hopefully i'm going to remedy that early in next year or whenever they come out on blu-ray and dvd so yeah um black christmas did not make the cut <laughs> sorry it was all right it was fine it was a perfectly fine movie but just definitely perfectly fine does not make the top 10 of 2019 for sure. And like I said, I think I'm going to try to do the top 10 of the decade. I might just take my favorite. I might just do my favorite movie from each year of the decade uh, for my next episode or my next solo episode. Uh, if I can't get a guest, I will be doing a solo episode next week. But uh, hopefully I will have a guest between now and then. Um, but yeah, moving right along, we're going into the top 10 now. Um, number 10, one of my, uh, underdog picks of this list. It's a movie that I didn't, um, I didn't think would be coming out. I didn't think it was going to happen ever. Um, it's a movie that I had kind of low expectations going into. 
just because a lot of people had really shit all over it, and uh, they were wrong. This movie's fucking awesome. Uh, it's a it's three from hell. Rob Zombie's three from hell. Uh, it is the third movie in the Firefly trilogy. <clears throat> I gave it the perfect five out of five. It was Devil's Rejects Go to Mexico. It was everything you want in a exploitation movie and more. Um, you know, God, I mean, what else could you have wanted from this movie? More Captain Spaulding. Uh, well, of course, everybody wants more Captain Spaulding. But Richard Brake does a excellent job as that third member of the crew when he plays um, the Midnight Wolfman. Uh, I think he is an excellent addition to the family. Uh, if he wants to make five or six more of these movies, then I will definitely watch all five or six more of them. Um, you know, it's not the Oscar grabber. No, and that's not what he's wanting. That He doesn't care about winning an Oscar. He's making a violent action horror movie. It's like, yeah, that's what Rob Zombie's going for. He's going for explosions and kills. He's not going for story and drama. I mean, the, the, there's a good story there, but it's just fun. It's a fun movie. Watch it, enjoy it, you know, fucking move along, brother. Uh, I thought it was better than The Devil's Rejects. I don't think it's better than House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, but it is definitely better than The Devil's Rejects. So suck on that one, people. Um, again, I gave it a 5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. I thought it was fucking fantastic. <clears throat> Had to get a little drinky-poo. Throat's drying out. <clears throat> um... Next up on the list, number nine is Bliss. Uh, this is a movie I watched right around Thanksgiving. Um, it was released September 27th. Uh, written and directed by Joe Begos. Um, starring Dar Dora Madison Burge as Desi. Uh, Desi is a struggling artist. She's got artist block or whatever. Um, creative block, I guess is what you would call it. Um, and then she starts taking this drug that, and she winds up, ends up being like a fucking vampire basically, but everybody just thinks she's strung out. Uh, I think it's really interesting the way they treat the, uh, vampirism in this movie. I think it's a fantastic, dirty, uh, gritty movie and i love dirty gritty movies i gave it a 4.5 out of 5 on the martel scale definitely go check that one out um normally when i do top 10 list i don't do the martel scale but these mostly all had ratings already so <clears throat> all it took was me looking up the rating so uh next up number eight is the dead don't die written and directed by jim jarmusch Released on June fourteenth this year, um, this movie's got everybody and their goddamn cousin in it, and it's a whole lot of fun. If you're not expecting a zombie movie, um, if you want Zombie Land, they made one of those this year. Uh, that's not what this movie is. Uh, this movie is a dark comedy, a uh, very talky comedy uh that just so happens to end up having zombies in it um very fun uh tilda swinton with her eccentric character that turns out to be something crazy is just uh insane jesus christ sorry i can't get comfortable right now um but yeah, Dead Don't Die, I give it a four out of 4.5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. Uh, I thought it was a great movie. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, it tinged on a little too long for me, but like, I didn't feel like I was, you know, ready to leave at any point. Like, some movies are just too goddamn long. This one was just a touch too long, but it it was good enough to kind of make up for the fact. 
Um, next up, number seven on the list is The Beach Bum. My boy Harmony Corinne wrote and direct this one. It came out March 29th, starring Matthew McConaughey as Moondog. And I mean, when I first saw the trailer for this one, I think it was when I saw um, mid-90s with my brother. They played the trailer for this, and I was just like, this movie is going to be fucking insane. It has Jonah Hill. It has, uh, I think Amy Adams is in it. Um, I could be mistaking her for her doppelganger. I probably am. Uh, there's another actress that kind of looks like her. She has the red hair and, uh, God, that's definitely who's in the movie and not Amy Adams, but I can't think of her name. I'm so sorry. Uh, somebody's yelling at me right now. Um, it's got Snoop Dogg. It's got Jimmy Buffett. Martin Lawrence is in there at a certain point. I mean, Jesus Christ, everybody that you can think of has an appearance in this movie and it's just the most off the wall cast of characters that you could find. It's Harmony Korine doing what Harmony Korine does, and it's his new uh, Florida yacht style of doing it, uh, as opposed to his old school way of doing it with the white trash and the uh, uh, the gritty city people and rural people. He's got the now uh, the the trashy yacht club members or the the beach bum, if, if you will, uh, literally, uh, Zac Efron's in it. it it's, it's just, it's so incredibly fucking crazy. Um, Jonah Hill just steals the show as Moondog's lawyer. And like, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, I watched it like twice the same week. Uh, 4.5 out of five on the Martell scale. Definitely go check out the beach bum. Um, <clears throat> Number six on the the list is Knives and Skin, uh, released December 6th. I just recently saw it at uh, Vizart Video. They had it for the opening week. They watched, they screened it for that week. Um, fucking excellent movie, uh, especially getting to see it in that uh, theater-esque um, environment. Um uh, because their screening room is not huge and the screen's not like super big. It's not like going to a theater for real, but it's bigger than bigger than the screen you have at home and it's definitely darker and louder than it is at home. And the sound is really good at Vizard. I love watching movies there. Um But yeah, Knives and Skin, I gave it a five out of five on the Martell scale. It's a surreal uh, coming of age mystery movie suspense thriller um it it defies genre i can't really even say that it's one thing or another because it's everything all at once and it's just great for it uh written and directed by jennifer reader i mean it's just what it's it's fantastic and she picks she her casting on this was just great um not only was everybody a great uh performer they did they did their role amazingly but they all were beautiful human beings as well like just gorgeous individuals i cannot i was just enamored the whole time looking at the screen uh not only with the attractiveness of the cast but the cinematography the lighting uh the different shots and stuff it's just it's a well-made beautiful defined film uh, i feel like uh, okay so now we're getting into the top five. I am actually going to hit pause real quick so that I can stand up and stretch my legs, but I will be right back with my top five. Fuck! Mm. You know, it breaks my heart, Moondog. It breaks my heart because you a motherfucking has-been, boy. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that is. Is that a bad thing? God damn, it's a bad thing, Moondog. As your forever agent, I feel obliged to be truthful with you at all times. Uh, you're a shitty agent. It's sad, Moondog. You used to be a motherfucking ATM for me, boy. You have pissed away your talent on women and booze and total excess. Now you're talking. Yeah, all those things, that's what feeds the juices up here in my nugget, man. Through my loins, up the Autobahn, my spirit and mind, man. I, I'm, 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 
I'm moist right now. I'm lubricated. Yeah, but you the fastest horse in my stable, boy. You think I want to take a motherfucking shotgun, put it in your mouth, blow your brains all over my nice motherfucking clothes? That's the fucking Lewis I'm talking about. You think I want to do that? You was a revolutionary rider. You were a radical. Your words meant something to people. Either way, it's a good thing I'm rich, Lewis. Especially since I'm well hung. You ain't rich, Mundo. Your wife's rich. That's true. And it's been a while since I had you in me, but you ain't well hung, boy. <laughs> you ain't yeah, well hung. Get in there now. I Come mean, goddamn. God. San Francisco standoff, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to Martell's Movie Madness. Um, sorry for having to cut again. I needed to get up and tend to some things. Like I said, I'm trying to get a million things done at once today. Uh, and I know there's noise in the background. It's now raining on my tin roof trailer uh i know what you're saying there's always noise in the background it's not that bad you it's okay ryan uh but I, it's just i just i want it to sound as good as possible for you guys because i know i hate listening to really shitty audio quality podcast um but maybe y'all will join me on patreon and help me out in upgrading my equipment upgrading my uh studio getting some soundproofing equipment um and then hopefully one day i'll be joe rogan level where i've got a office building where i just go and record podcast and i'm pr- producing podcast twice three times a week um but yeah um like i said this is going to be the top five movies of 2019 now a uh, quick little recap of the First, the 10 through 6, uh, 3 from Hell, Bliss, Dead Don't Die, The Beach Bum, and Knives and Skin, in that order. Um, now, the clip you just heard in that break there was from The Beach Bum, and that was Jonah Hill and Matthew McConaughey's character. Just, that scene is just fantastic. Every time Jonah Hill is on the screen, it's it's amazing. You guys have got to see that movie. Um, But yeah, going on, number five is Jordan Peele's Us. Uh, It was released March 22nd. Uh, It stars Lupita uh, Yongo, I assume is how you pronounce her last name. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, She plays Adelaide... Uh, Wilson and then Winston Duke is her husband Gabriel Gabe Wilson Um, every person in this movie plays a dual role Um, but the main cast the family the Wilson family uh, are the the most dual role of the the film because they have uh, pretty much the entire time they're playing two different characters um The movie is just insane. It's so good. Um, I thought it works on uh, so many different levels. It works as a horror movie without social commentary. It works with the social commentary. It works as a... With the comedy that it has in it. I mean, it's fucking hilarious. It's scary. It's tense. It's everything that you could possibly want from a horror movie. Uh, Jordan Peele is definitely sharpening his uh, talons, if you would say, to become one of those next great horror masters. Um, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. Definitely go check out Us. It's available now on Blu-ray, DVD, Video On Demand, all that good shit. Um, So yeah, go check that one out. Next up is number 4, Joker. Uh, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. It was released October 4th of this year. uh, Directed by Todd Phillips. Written by Todd Phillips and Scott Silver. And stars Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. Or Arthur Fleck. Um, This movie is not really a comic book movie. It is a serious like uh, crime drama, I guess. 
Um, it's basically Taxi Driver with the Joker. Um, you know, Arthur Fleck is basically Travis Bickle. Uh, there's no underage prostitute, though. It's just a man going fucking nuts because mental health is, you know, just completely ignored, basically, or found as trivial in this, and, well, I was, I was gonna say in the, the world of this film, but in this world in general, um, so yeah, it's, it's a very strong movie, it's a very tense movie, it's hard to watch, it's violent, um, but it's very good, it's also very entertaining, and you feel... Uh, like you've watched something of substance when you go in and watch this big blockbuster movie that everybody was talking about. So I think it, it works so much better on that level because it is this movie that everybody was talking about because it was Joker and it had such a um, well-written, well-delivered message. Um, but yeah, like I said, four out of five on the Martell scale. Definitely go see Joker if it's still playing anywhere near you. Um, if not, you'll have to wait till it comes out on the Blu-ray or DVD. But it's definitely worth picking up um, wherever you like to pick up movies from. Number three on my list is Gaspar Noe's Climb... Uh, not Gaspar Noe, it's Gaspar Noe. I had this... Uh, I had to go and do a deep dig to find out how to really pronounce Gaspar Noe's name. Uh, and it's that. It's Gaspar Noe. Because um, I had heard people say Noe. Uh, and I had heard it said no. So I needed to know. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but number three is Gaspar Noe's uh, Climax. I gave it a 5 out of 5 on the Martell scale. Uh, it came out March 1st this year in the United States. Uh, this movie technically was released last year, but not in the United States. It was released foreign, uh, well, not foreign for them because it's a French movie, but it was released in Europe early, uh, it was late last year and it came out this year, early this year for the United States. So it, it made the list, uh, just barely. <clears throat> uh, but I gave it a five out of five on the Martell scale. It is chaos and dread uh, with bright flashing colors and dancing and it's just insane and off-putting and unsettling the entire time and it, it, it doesn't stop it, it's it starts with a slow build but once the madness ensues it is just full throttle and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse until the end and it's just, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, it, it would pair well with 2018's Suspiria. It has that uh, dancing tie-in as well as the dread and tension tie-in. Um, and I have to admit that that was not my idea. Uh, it was a friend of mine, or I guess an acquaintance of mine. I don't know if we'd really be considered friends. Uh he told me that I should watch uh, Climax and then 2018 Suspiria, and I could definitely see that as a great double feature. Um, but yep, that's number three. Number two is Under the Silver Lake. I gave it a five out of five on the Martell scale. Uh, released April 19th this year. Written and directed by David Robert Mitchell, which I think is the guy who did It, it Follows, which is another great uh suspenseful movie that he that they've that is uh came out a couple years ago and it's just fuck fantastic um but under the silver lake is definitely a little more of a suspense thriller than it is a horror movie like it follows is definitely a horror movie uh under the silver lake is a is more of a suspense thriller mystery movie um it's got andrew garfield in it and it is like Hitchcock meets David Lynch um, with a pinch of sexiness in it. Uh, this is definitely a sexy, trashy, uh, weird movie. Uh, 
I gave it a five out of five on the Martell scale, and it is number two on my top ten of 2019. So, obviously, I think very highly of it. Um, I loved where it went with the ending. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it here, but it's fucking insane, and it's just amazing. It's so well done. Um, You really don't see anything coming because... Everything, oh, sorry, everything seems like it's just random, but it's not. It all kind of does tie in together, and I think it's just a very good movie. So go check out Under the Silver Lake. Um, yeah, now is the time we've all been waiting for. And I think that anybody that knows me uh, personally... Or at least knows me via social media and knows that my number one is probably pretty predictable, but it's midsummer. Um, it's not midsummer because that's not how you say it. It's midsummer. Uh, they say it in the movie. If you've watched the movie, then you know that it's pronounced midsummer, not midsummer. I don't know why people are such fucking idiots. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just... It it irks the shit out of me when people say that. Uh, It's like when people say uh, the curse of La Llorona wrong. La Llorona? La La Lona? What? Huh? Um, It's just like, man, they say it in the movie so many times. But anyway, uh, Midsummer is my absolute favorite movie of 2019 it is just fucking blunt force trauma in cinematic form uh the suspense the dread even though you know at certain points what might be about to happen next like you're just like wait a minute wait 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 and you're just it beats you over the head with dread Oh, shit. See, I I didn't record this last night because I didn't want to be yawning the whole time. Because I got in from... uh, I'll tell you after I get done talking about Midsummer, But that's why I didn't do it last night. I did it today because I thought I'd be yawning all night. But now here I am, yawning. Uh, But anyway, Midsummer is just brutal. It's suspenseful. It's very... Man, it's very just wonderful. Uh, It does everything that most movies need darkness for in the fucking daylight. Um, uh, Ari Aster has a a thing for the head trauma. Um, Much like Tarantino always sneaks in some feet stuff. Much like uh, I hear that Fulci has an eye thing. I haven't really watched many Fulci movies, but um, it's very evident that Ari Aster likes to smash people's heads. Um, So yeah, Midsummer, it's fucking fantastic. Um, I don't want to spoil it. I can't fucking, I can't spoil it. I just won't do it. I want you to go watch this fucking movie and know that you're either going to love it and you're going to be full of dread and wondering how they're going to get to where they're going or how they're going to get out of what they're getting into or what's going to go on. And it's just incredible. It is a modern day um, answer to the Wicker Man. It's not a rip off of the Wicker Man uh, because story-wise and tonally they're a lot different. But well, not tonally. They're they're tonally about the same. They're similar, but um, yeah, it's just insane. It's so good. Oh man, I just oh man, I I can't wait till I get the opportunity to see the director's cut. Uh, hopefully that Blu-ray comes out soon because I would love to see the director's cut. Um, it's just amazing. 
that's one movie where I watched two hours, two plus hours, and I was like, wait, there's not more? Where's where's the rest of it? Like, it's just, I just, I wanted that. That movie could have been five hours long, and I would have loved it, because it was just so fucking good. Um, but yeah, it came out July 3rd this year. I saw it on opening night um, with the person who told me to watch. Uh, shout out Adam uh, for watching Midsummer with me and suggesting that Suspiria and Climax be a double feature. Um, but yeah, uh, written and directed by Ari Aster, uh, the, the writer and director of Hereditary. Hello, probably my favorite movie of 2018. Um, so yeah, that is all I got this week. Uh, just going to plug a few things here in social medias. Uh, this is our video, of course, and, uh, Armada Skate Shop. Uh, find me on social, on, find us on social media, find the podcast on social media, at Martell's Movie Madness on Facebook and Instagram, at Movie Madness 69 on Twitter. Uh, find me personally on Facebook, I mean on Twitter. Instagram at Trailer Trash God and on Twitter at Martell the God. Um, as always, I want you to go check out Vizart Video if you live in Charlotte. Um, it's located on Eastway at the Eastway Crossing Shopping Center, uh, right there in Eastside Charlotte, uh, just a sh- little bit down the road from Plaza Midwood. Um, going over there, they got almost four th- 40,000. Not four thousand. They've got almost forty thousand titles to ch- to choose from. Um, incredible! It doesn't cost anything to join. You just have to have a card to put on file and local ID, um, and rentals are like three fifty a pop. I know it's a little bit more expensive than Redbox, but they also have movies that Redbox does not do not have. Uh, they also are local. They're a nonprofit, so everything they do, everything they make at Vizart Video goes into paying the employees, keeping the lights on, keeping cool events like the VHS Potluck and the Cult Movies in the Cave going. Um, it's just it's part of culture. It's part of history. Um, they've been in business for a, a long time, you know, and. I think it's important for us to support businesses like that. Uh, long after Blockbuster is gone, the mom and pop video shops have lived on. Uh, there are very few of them left. Vizard is one of them. Be part of history. Be part of the culture of your city. Uh, go over there and check out Vizard Video. Um, yeah, and then right down the same shopping center, a couple shops down is Armada Skate Shop. My boy Pat over there at Armada. Um, He's just a good dude. Uh, He's got a lot of good products over there. You want to go over there and check it out. He's got all you need for skateboards, uh, grip tape, wheels, bearings, decks, all that good shit. He's also got some street, he's got street apparel, skateboarding shoes, you know, whatever you need for skateboarding, he's got it over there. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, make sure you join us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Martell's Movie Madness. Get that bonus episode that I just put up for Christmas. There's, I think, some other bonus material that I dropped earlier. Yeah, there's the Friday the 13th franchise ranking uh, that I dropped earlier in the month. Um, for just $3 a month, you get early access to all of the podcast and YouTube uh, content and then the next tier up you get early access and bonus materials so it's it's definitely worth checking out and joining um, but until next time let's watch some fucking movies well it looks like you survived this time come back next week see if you can do it again. There'll be more thrills and chills awaiting on ourselves. Ha 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 ha!